Hello and welcome to, uh, it's not week 17 because of the bank holidays, but it's webinar 17 of 2023. So a renaming strategy happening. So if this is the first one you've watched of the year, welcome. And um, this is Move It or Lose It. Now, before I tell you what we're going to go through, the purpose of these, well, this plethora of webinars is to help you go from just goal setting at the beginning of the year where you set some kind of health resolution so you actually go and get your goal and also if you're just starting to actually think about health this is to help inspire you to better self-health responsibility because i truly believe that if you are healthier you will feel more at peace with yourself and if you feel more at peace with yourself then you're likely to influence others around you there's going to be a rising tide of peaceful healthy people and this will help lead to world peace one person at a time so brief little bit about me um yep i've written a book it's on amazon um i love speaking in front of uh, audiences um self peace activist self health responsibility champion and yes there's a picture in the guinness book of records in the year 2014. um my favorite quote it's no measure of health be well adjusted to a profoundly sick society and if you are looking at the news today especially if you follow someone like dr john campbell who's a nurse practitioner and he teaches nurses and he's written some books and um, if you follow his research you'll know that at the moment the world is profoundly sick and it's getting sicker but the good news is it's not up to the world it's up to you whether you get healthier or not by making the right choices so I have a number of tools, um, uh, which I'll go through in a moment. But what we're going to be covering today is the miracle pill to cure most diseases. And no, this is not um, this is not hype. It's the ultimate vaccine to prevent most diseases. Still not hype and very much proven. Um, bit of a clue. Benefits of exercise, the dangers of not exercising, exercise guidelines, and because it is currently movement, May or May is movement month, um, I have a bit of an offer at the end for May 2023. So if you're watching this later, I'm sorry, um, this special offer is not on, but you can always reach out and see what I might do for you. So some of the tools I use to help you keep on track is the mental performance mastery um, coaching 10 pillars. And then I also use and I love the heroic.us app for better energy, productivity and engagement. And there you go. It's actually proven to help in 30 days, even the free version. And I will put links out into the emails. Um, there's an actual protocol to follow to actually improve everything. And there's even an equation. And I've actually, if you look up soul force equation and Chris Pickard, you will find my video about the soul force equation. And to help implement all of these things, there's the magnificent seven health strategies. Um, think right, talk right, drink right, eat right, detox right, sleep right. And today we are covering move right or move it or lose it. Um, although I have also broken it down into the fantastic functional three, functional movement, which we're talking about today to a certain degree, functional nutrition and functional thought. And I prefer the name functional philosophy. And that's all thanks to Heroic and Brian Johnson. So today, what if there was one prescription that could prevent and treat dozens of diseases such as diabetes, hypertension and obesity? Would you prescribe it to your patients? Would you take it yourself? That's Robert E. Salas, um, and he is, of course, talking about exercise. Exercise can be used like a vaccine to prevent disease and a medication to treat disease. If there were a drug with the same benefits as exercise, it would instantly be the standard of care, and it would be a blockbuster drug. If exercise, and then that's by Dr. Salas and then from Dr. N. Butler, if exercise could be packed in a pill, it would be the single most widely prescribed and beneficial medicine in the nation. Obviously, an American there because he's not talking about the world. Bless those Americans. 
And then this is an excerpt from The Lancet, July 2012. In view of the prevalence, global reach and health effect of physical inactivity, the issue should be appropriately described as pandemic with far reaching health, economic, environmental, environmental and social consequences. And this currently be 2023. And we've just come out of all kinds of lockdowns in much of the Western world. We know that basically so many people exercise less Everyone's actually in worse health than before for multiple reasons, and we basically need to start changing this. So this is from 2013, and this is the leading causes of death in the US. Heart disease, malignant cancers, chronic lower resp respiratory diseases, cerebrovascular diseases, accidents, unintentional injuries, Alzheimer's disease, diabetes, the list goes on. All of them can be decreased if people are fitter and stronger, because basically physical inactivity is the number one cause of heart disease. Physical inactivity leads to the immune system not working better. And basically the people who, who exercise most have the least cancers. Yes, it can even prevent accidents and unintentional injuries that lead to death, because if you're fitter and stronger, you're less likely to get into the accidents and injuries. It is actually the number one thing you can do to lower your blood sugar is exercise and build muscle. So pretty much everything on this list can be decreased with regular exercise. Um, even, yes, even this, there's medicine and science in sports and exercise 2002 routine exercise snuffs out common colds. As I said, exercise improves the immune system. Um, it's also very important for bone density. It's actually more important than taking calcium or vitamin D pills exercise and it's not the intensity of exercise it's the regularity of exercise and this was in the journal of pediatrics in 2000 because they were talking about growing strong bones in children and of course it is just as true in the elderly as well there's no time at which you can't strengthen your bones through exercise there's no time at which you can't actually build more muscle through exercise exercise decreases pain exercise keeps you young and exercise helps create your brain. Uh, this is a real top quote that many, well, top quote among chiropractors. Roger Sperry won Nobel Prize for his brain research, said 90% of the stimulation and nutrition to the brain is generated by movement of the spine. And it goes on, movement is genetics. Um, we speculate that genes in evolved with the expectation of requiring a certain threshold of physical activity. Exercise induces normal expression of the genome. So what does that mean? It means if you don't exercise, your genes will not be expressed in a healthy way. And it's been shown conclusively that basically exercise outstrips genes. So basically, if you have a genetic familial tendency to obesity, diabetes, heart disease, whatever it is, it's negated pretty much by getting the right amount of exercise. I cover this more in my blood pressure and heart disease webinars, where it's all about getting not too much exercise as well as not too little. Most people are doing too little, but too much is also a problem as well. And, and so this is from one of my favorite uh, mentors or influences, Dr. James Chestnut. Exercise normalizes gene expression and normal gene expression equals health. Movement stimulates the brain, which in turn looks after our vital organs, muscles, and psychological well-being. Um, actually, this wasn't by James Chestnut. This was actually by me. <laughs> okay, yes. And number three, exercise raises a very important chemical in the body is known as glutathione. Glutathione is an antioxidant, which in basic terms means it prevents us from rusting on the inside. Um, and this is actually taken from a webinar that is part of my Magnificent Seven training. So there won't be more of that later, but if you want the Magnificent Seven training, stay tuned. Now, this is why um, basically laziness or sedentary lifestyle is part of what I call the four horsemen of your health apocalypse. So there's laziness, malnutrition, stress, and toxicity. And I basically chose this for biblical reasons because they're the four horsemen of the apocalypse and they're the four horsemen of your health apocalypse. And the four core four things that help you get better, thanks to Dr. Bob Rakowski, are exercise, good nutrition, detoxification, and learning to become resilient to stress. So 
let's go into a little bit more about exercise and activity. Oh, I thought that was going to move the other thing. Never mind. So there are a number of different types of activity. There's your everyday activity. So this is the stuff that you do to get to and from work, to get up and down stairs, to looking after your children, if you have children, that is, or your grandchildren, if you're looking after the grandchildren. There's the normal stuff you do around the house, movement, DIY, gardening, the stuff that you do in your job as well. So for me, a lot of the time when I'm working with patients, I'm up and moving around. Okay, and that's basically everyday activity. And then you have active recreation. So there's what do you do not related to your daily activities. So when you go out for a longer cycle ride or you actually go out for walks, etc. And then there's all the different sports. And missing under here is also stuff like actually going out and um, you know exercising at the gym, for instance. And these all play a part of these are all part of movement. And they all have different different functions basically but basically for everyday activity you need to train in active recreation and sport to make sure that you can do your everyday activity but if your everyday activity is nothing then you need a lot of active recreation and sport to make up for it so physical inactivity what's the cost um well the cost is basically well sedentary life is as great a risk factor as smoking and obesity for heart disease so that basically means that if you are a smoker who exercises, okay, and this is actually true, if you're a smoker who exercises, you are probably less likely to get heart disease than someone who's a non-smoker who sits down all day and does not exercise, okay? Um, it increases your risk of obesity, um, diabetes, you can read this later. Um, it actually changes your body on a molecular level. It actually starts when you're inactive, your whole body starts breaking down. According to research from NASA, sitting down for more than 20 minutes, your muscles start breaking down, your nervous system starts breaking down, your hormone system starts breaking down, your bones start breaking down because your body just doesn't, your, your genetics goes, well, this person's not using their body. We're just going to, you know, disintegrate it, basically. So 20 minutes of inactivity is all it takes to start this molecular level of disintegration. And so what happens if you exercise regularly? Well, apart from the fact that you feel better, um, it changes your body, improve body composition. You actually get better results on your blood tests as well, um, much better blood sugar. Um, if you're doing the right amount of exercise, it will reduce your blood pressure as well, because too much exercise beyond your capacity to repair will actually cause stress. And um, we'll get to that in a moment. Um, your nervous system works better, so your heart works better, you're less likely to clot, all sorts of things. Your, yeah, automatic, yeah, skip over that. Um, enhanced endothelial function. Again, if you watch my webinars on blood pressure, then you'll know how important the endothelium is to the whole of your health. And of course, improved psychological well-being, which yeah, changes your body, changes your body, changes your body. Ah, maybe it's coming up. It basically helps your brain as well. So, so. Oh, that's because it's what does this all mean to me? Yes, there you go. Regular physical activity decreases um, your chance of dying by 39%. Even if you're doing a little bit of exercise, you get a benefit. So it's not all or nothing. It's the more you do to a certain extent, the better things get. Um, you'll improve your immunity. So you decrease chance of getting cancers as well, life expectancy actually increases, quality of life increases, physical health increases. Again, you can slow this down and watch this later. Um, decrease um, osteoporosis, better balance, decrease fractures. And then there's the mental health, decrease anxiety, decrease fatigue, um, less anger, less Parkinson's, less Alzheimer's, it just goes on and on and on the benefits of exercise. And of course, children benefit too. Their brains work better, they get better grades, better marks at school. And I actually go into this more in detail, how, how exercise improves the brain in my Magnificent Seven training on Move Right. So 
you've got to set an example. If you have children, uh, children are much more likely to exercise if they see you exercising on a regular basis. So exercise is the best medicine. How do you get this into your life? Well, these are some of the official guidelines, first of all. Um, 150 minutes of moderate aerobic activity. I'll go through this in a moment. Um, 30 minutes a day, five days a week, basically. So most people have got the time to fit in 30 minutes of exercise. When you look at the time you might be spending, uh, you know, watching TV, sitting down, reading a book or doing something yeah, less uh, constructive. Um, and strength and resistance sessions are also vitally important because you need to build muscle and that also helps make bones stronger as well. And as you age, it's muscle loss. That basically means you can't hold yourself up. So you're more likely to fall and fracture. Another guideline is 75 minutes of vigorous activity. So not just gentle, but vigorous, but again, two times a week of strength and resistance training. And in a third guideline, a mix, a moderate, a mix of moderate and vigorous. Um, so two 30 minutes runs plus two 30 minute brisk walking um, and two times strength and resistance training again. So what are all these things? What is moderate aerobic activity? It's basically getting around and moving, but you can still uh, talk a little bit. That's that's the basic way. So brisk walking could be, you know, getting into a swimming pool, riding a bike, all these different things like playing tennis, doing aerobics, Zumba. But basically it's it's where you can still talk. Um, whereas vigorous activity is pretty much where <laughs> you're gasping for air and you can't really talk very long, just in like a few words, a couple of sentences maybe. And then you've got to start breathing again. And that's basically the the way to uh, to know what you're doing strength training is where you're actually picking up weights or using your body weight or doing something that actually requires you to feel using your strength and there's a number of different exercises that you can do you don't have to join a gym currently i'm doing most of my workouts at home apart from when i'm running of course then i'm outside and i do a mixture of things i do running i do strength training with my body weight i pick up weights i use resistance bands and i'm at the moment really big into what's called variable resistance training so that's using exercise bands and things actually the, the tension changes as you're stretching the bands and um, and basically you want to try and build in as much movement as possible into your daily life so if there are stairs uh, take the stairs if you're going up an escalator then actually walk up. Don't just stand there and let the machine take you. Let the machine take you there quicker because you're going to walk on it as well. If you're on a travelator, walk on the travelator. Get places faster by actually not being lazy. That's the purpose of these things. Um, are there risks with taking up physical activity? Yes, you can get injuries. But this is why it's great to have a core workout first or get the core of your system working before you start doing something like running. Maybe start off with a personal trainer. Maybe get some one-to-one -one Pilates or yoga. There's a number of different ways to get started with basic exercise. And I'll cover some things in a minute. Now, one of the things that I really recommend a lot of people do is um, go and listen to this very recent interview, The Logical Approach to Optimal Health, um, from Dr. James Chestnut. And that's on the Energy Blueprint channel on YouTube, but also there's a podcast as well. If you get my emails, you'll already have gotten this in the past couple of weeks. Dr. James Chestnut wrote, has written this book more recently called Live Right for Your Species Type, Eat Well, Move Well, Think Well. That's uh, basically functional thought, functional movement and uh, functional nutrition but he's written this for the lay person. But I also take his guidelines from, because I did his course many years ago, and one of the modules was what he was innate physical fitness and spinal hygiene. If you've been following me for a long time, then you'll know that uh, spinal hygiene is one of the things I try and encourage my patients to do. And on the front of this book, I think that girl, that baby girl is actually James's daughter, I think, although she's going to be grown up now because that's about 20 years old, that book. But in the book and in the guidelines, and again, if you are an existing client or if you want to get the Magnificent Seven training, 
all of these guidelines will be there. So the activities to avoid or minimize, there's 10 major ones. Of course, sitting, it's a no brainer. Um, one side of sport, this is something that I talk about a lot with patients, if they're golfers or tennis players um, or whatever. If you're using one side, you should actually practice with the other side, especially if you're not doing any other exercise. Because not only is it good for the muscles on the other side, it's actually really good for the brain as well when you start exercising with the other arm, with your hand, and working in both ways. And also, whatever you're doing, make sure you've got good posture or good technique with what you're doing to prevent accidents and injuries. Good choices to make. Um, well, there are 12 major choices, um, and you can have access to them all if you want to. Um, but yeah, follow the innate physical fitness plan, which I cover in a moment. Daily innate spinal hygiene, cover that in a moment. Regular chiropractic spinal checkups or osteopathic or physiotherapy to someone to actually work on your body on a regular basis and check all the joints and the muscles. Frequent breaks with exercises and stretches. Again, the work on NASA says don't stay still for more than 20 minutes during the day. Get up, move around. And one of my favorite things to do for people who drive is set your mirrors up in your car so that you have to have good posture to use the mirrors. So it reminds you to stay in good posture while you're driving at least. So the innate physical fitness program, um, it's 24 weeks. And the first six weeks, again, I'm not gonna read this out. You can actually just pause this and actually read through it. And it's basically a way to get gently started. Okay, and I am going to show you where you can find some spinal hygiene exercises because the rest of this is self-explanatory. Then after six weeks, you actually upgrade it. Again, I go through this in my Move Right webinar, and if you're an existing client or patient, I will, of course, get the whole lot to you. But you can just go to YouTube um, and look up spinal hygiene or actually look up my name and spinal exercises. And the most, most recent ones I've done is part one, two, three. Um, part one is basic spinal movement. And then two and three are slightly harder, so a bit more strenuous and a bit more of a workout for some people. So that is a good place to start with just some gentle, gentle movement. And of course, if you have any aches or pains, joint problems, then maybe it's a good idea to see a chiropractor, osteopath, physiotherapist to give you specific exercises to help you get out of pain and to cope with what's going on. Now, Move Right is just part of the seven magnificent health strategies. And what I did many years ago is I actually did a course that I developed for patients um, and I took them through a coaching process over seven weeks going through, well, it might have been eight weeks, actually. Anyway, there were seven weeks, seven modules. So one a week and basically I did a module with the training and then I did a question and answer and I recorded it as well because that was useful. But I also had some other chiropractors and practitioners join it and it found they found that it was immensely valuable and it helped transform their practices. So this program originally for my patients also helped practitioners as well. And um, I did a version two of it as well. I did an upgraded version of it. Now, people that originally went through it paid three, four hundred pounds. I sell this for about five hundred pounds as well by itself. But um, because it's May and I want everyone to really get everything about moving right and get hold of all these different things that I've been speaking about for the past few weeks. So it's not just about how you move right, but thinking right in a communication hydration, eat right, detox right, sleep right. Um, I'm going to give you access to all the videos and all the question and answer videos. So there's, like this. there's 14 webinars all together. Um, it's something that, um, yeah, some people should say I should have charged £2,000 for with all the information that's in there. Um, and I think I'll also have the PDFs. Is there some PDFs, I think, of the, in there as well, um, of the actual slides? So instead of £500, if you're an existing patient, an existing patient or client means someone who I am currently working with, not someone who comes in every once every two or three years um, because you might be in pain or might give me a ring. But if you're someone who's coming in regularly, then you can have this all for just £99. If you email me, 
and or you can actually bring it up as well and ask um but email me and we can have access for 99 pounds but that's just for the month of may 2023 now if you're not an existing client or someone that's not coming in regularly um, and getting things done then or someone who's never seen me before then again i'm still going to give you a very good offer 199 pounds just reach out and yeah it's, but it's just for the month of may 2023 and i might throw in some other bits and pieces as well so if you want all that reach out but next i was going to do it this time but i decided i better do movement because it is may is movement month so the next pillar seven of the mental performance mastery program which is routines and habits of excellence so that's how to actually start building your habits some of the things some of the tools some of the ways you can look for what's going on to actually build in the habits and routines that are going to actually change your life and if you need to reach out um beatbloodpressure.com bodyandbalance.com um, and if you need to email me you can email me through either of those um or you can find me on social media i'm actually now on TikTok, that's going remarkably well i'm on linkedin i'm on facebook i'm on instagram as well but basically facebook and TikTok are probably the places i'm more likely to answer you specifically because on linkedin um i've got an automated thing happening at the moment so please don't be disappointed if i don't actually reach out to you directly on linkedin so facebook websites um, and also just ask questions on youtube um, ask a question we can actually uh, start talking through the youtube comments as well okay be well be magnificently fantastically healthy and i will go to the questions and answers in just a moment bye for now let's